welcome to the first steps um, on completing your thesis. Who's already in a thesis class in this room? Who's already in a thesis class? Okay, just a couple of you. That is the best news that I've heard all day. Who knows why? Because what? Because you're not a, you put a register? No, <laughs> oh, oh, no one asked you to bring up problems. That's at the end of the seminar. We can't register. That's your issue. <laughs> she, she's not even a student in HC. She just want to talk about not being able to register. Um, no, what, what's great about it is that you all are here and you haven't necessarily even started the class, started the process. And what I found is that when students approach the thesis process, there's oftentimes so much anxiety surrounding. <laughs> is that a head shake for anxiety? There's oftentimes so much anxiety surrounding you that once you're in the class, it's almost a little bit too late to start thinking about this process. When I sent out the invitation, I invited not just the, ba not just the master's students, but I also invited the bachelor students. And so there may be some BA students in here who are just interested in knowing what this is about. Um, we help to break anxiety when we increase information. And what you all are doing right here today is increasing your information and knowledge base about the thesis and about the thesis process so that when you're facing it, it's not quite that bad. Like Francesca said, it's still going to be long and hard, but it won't be that bad. And those are two different things. Long and hard is what you're here working for. It should be long and hard. We just don't pass these degrees out at Target. And so you should, <laughs> right? You should have to be here and work. When you get that master's degree, it should mean something, kind of like the 12 pounds that I want to lose before vacation. I'm going to have to work really hard at it. And so it will mean something because I had to work hard at it. Uh, and so who can tell me first, what is thesis? What is it? And why do you have to do it? <laughs> what is thesis? Why do you have to do it? So you all entered a master's program and none of you, none of you know what thesis is. It's a research project. What about, what about the thesis makes it a research project that's different than a research paper you would get in your class? You're practicing. Practicing what? Okay, yeah, and you're trying to find those answers for inquiries. Answers for inquiry, and that's a little bit different. Usually when you are in a class and you get a research paper, you're given a prompt and you're given information about what it is that you should do. <clears throat> One of the first steps inside thesis is learning that nobody's telling you what you have to talk about here. What are you passionate about? What does your voice tell you that you want to study? I remember when I first started my dissertation process and I was working with children with autism and I said, oh, I'm going to do it on children with autism and their families. And my chair was like, Is, are you passionate about that? I said, it's the work I do and it's awesome and I love it, but are you passionate about it? It's school. Do I have to be passionate about it? I just want to do it. What he explained to me was that my interest on the front end would get me going but it was my passion that would sustain me through the process of the project. And so when you're thinking about what it is that you want to do your thesis on, it's not just like getting a syllabus in a class and that syllabus says, you got three papers to do. Here are the title of your papers. Here's what you have to do it on. You have to find something that is going to be sustainable and you're going to have stamina enough to get through it. What, Car what Dr. Fider was just talking about that she and Dr. Webster and the other faculty are working on is enhancing the system such that we don't have students taking years and years and years to finish their thesis. It's not okay. It's not okay. And so part of this effort is this what, where you sit right now because what I want you to take from here is that as you move throughout the rest of your coursework is that you're consistently thinking, oh, that could be an awesome thesis topic. Or, oh, I get to make my paper, get to do a paper of my choice in this class. Maybe I'll do a seven page paper that relates to what I'm going to do for my thesis. And then you've already created the foundation for the work that you want to do. So as you move through this and you're gaining exposure early on, what I need you to do, what we need you to do in the School of Human Development is set a framework for thought processes that lead right there. That is the ultimate goal of this degree. That's what, you, that's what gives you the degree. 
You go through all your classes, but all those classes are built developmentally to give you a framework to be able to do your thesis. You learn about all these different things so that you have enough information to do a massive project like a thesis. And so every step of the way, you can be thinking about this, what it is that you want to do, what it is that you're passionate about. How can you seek information to reach that final goal, that final destination to move on and get out of school and make your dreams come true? You want to let a piece of paper stand in front of you and your dreams? I don't know. I don't know. So I'm grateful that you all are here uh, so that we can um, so that we can make this happen and get through this. We're going to go through the entire structure uh, of what this class looks like. And so on your handout, you'll see um, the purpose of a thesis is to help students gain a deeper understanding and appreciation of the construct, concern, experience, or condition. This work should contribute some originality to the body of existing knowledge on the topic or area some originality. What new thought are you bringing to the table as it relates to the topic that you're studying? So, abused children is not a new construct. There's lots of research on abused children, but perhaps you want to learn more about abuse and its connection to the digital divide in minority communities, or you want to look at ways to figure out how ethnicity and culture and poverty intersect and impact um, child abuse and child neglect. There are a variety of ways to go with it, but in order to know what's out there or what's original or not, you have to immerse yourself in the literature. You have to become consumers of what it is that you're looking to do. And let's be clear. Your thesis does not just have to be the standalone piece, uh, a piece of paper that gets you out of school. Your thesis has the capacity to turn into publishable work in the future. And so in addition to being um, an academic administrator and uh, a child welfare advocate and all the things that I've done throughout my career, I'm also a businessman. And when you can kill two birds with one stone, you do. And, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so when you are looking at the work that you want to do, you also want to see how viable is it in the community. Perhaps you work for a nonprofit agency by which your thesis can be research that supports a grant for the nonprofit agency that you work for. There are a variety of ways that you can utilize this research and motivate yourself to really, really move through it effectively and efficiently. And it's really important that you think about that. So thesis, as you see on your paper, is made up of six units of coursework. We have the first thesis class, which is HD688A, which some of you will be moving into soon if you're not already there. The foundation of HD688A is to get you going on the process with the goal of having some deliverables by the end of that. Two semesters here at Pacific Oaks College turns into a total of 30 weeks. That means that you have a total of 30 weeks to complete your thesis, or you can move into continuation, and we'll talk about that. And there's nothing bad with moving into con thesis continuation, but it is bad if you haven't taken the right steps in order to not have to do that. Is it possible to finish your thesis in 30 weeks? Absolutely. Is it unreasonable to go to thesis continuation? Absolutely not. Is it unreasonable to go to thesis continuation four and five times? Yes. Or three. Because we can support you to not have to do that. This course is the first of two courses in the thesis sequence. Students will develop and refine their topic and acquire a detailed understanding of the element of the formal thesis, including the personal statement, the literature review, methodology, and data collection and analysis. In addition, students will learn to organize their writing, develop themes, provide feedback to their peers. To meet the minimum requirements for passing this class, students must complete drafts of their introduction, methods chapter, and have begun work on their literature review and data collection. This is what's currently written in the catalog. By the time some of you get to thesis, this may look a little bit different. 
Because what I have found is that students need to have a few more deliverables turned in in order to successfully transition out and complete their thesis. And so even though this is what it says, we're going to talk more about where, where your aim should be, what you should be aiming to have done by the time you finish 688A, right? Everybody follow what we're talking about here? Good. So when we're talking about what we would like to happen inside HD 688A, we're hoping, we're hoping that students have the capacity to finish chapters one, chapters two, and chapters three of their thesis. We're going to talk more specifically about what these chapters are, what they mean, what you have to put in them, and all those things. However, this is a, this is a really great aim for a student to have. By the end of your 688 class, A class, you would like to have these things complete. What does that mean? That means dividing your 15-week semester into three different parts and saying, at the end of week five, at the end of week 10, and at the end of week 15, what types of things can I have done to complete that? This is a big undertaking. And you want to structure it in a way that grants you, that gives you the opportunity to be successful. Going in and just saying, oh, I'm in thesis class. I'm here, y'all. That's not sufficient. That's not sufficient. Your syllabus doesn't tell you what it is that you have to write, because that is your originality. When we talk about the personal statement in the thesis, we'll talk about something that's very unique here at PO, and that's the student's voice being a part of their thesis process. A lot of institutions don't invite so much of your voice into the thesis process, but because of our mission, because of our focus on social justice and a variety of other things, it's critical that the student's lived experience is a part of their thesis development and creation. And we want to hear that throughout your thesis, and we want to see that throughout your thesis. And so we'll talk more about what that looks like. Intro, introduce your topic, describe your interest in the topic, explain why it's needed. Once again, we'll go into more detail in each of these chapters, but these are just quick overviews. A summary of the literature that describes, supports, and or challenges your research topic. <laughs> Support methods and design incorporate ecological and social justice factors. In your handouts, you have an example of a sample literature review that you can use, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the section. 688C, Thesis Cohort Project. This course is the second of two thesis courses. Students will learn how to use data to confirm, extend, or challenge existing theories, as well as construct new theories about their topic. The class provides support for students to finish a draft of their thesis, which includes completion of the literature review, results, discussions, and conclusions. Students who do not complete their thesis by the end of the course must enroll in HD 699C. All, su all subsequent semesters, they are working on their thesis. This is the continuation class that we were talking about. So you spend your first 15 weeks in thesis 688A. You get through chapters 1, 2, and 3. And we're not saying that they have to be perfect. Drafts are sufficient. You get to thesis 688C, and then the goal is to finish the rest of it. Collect your data, finish it. But you get to the deadline, and the thesis is due to be submitted to the library, and we'll talk about that process as well. And you're not ready to submit it. You still got some APA format stuff, or some editing, or you didn't get a signature. That requires you to enroll in HD 699, which is thesis continuation. Thesis continuation is not a credit-bearing course, meaning that it's a zero-unit course. But there is a fee associated with the course, even though it's not a credit-bearing course. <coughs> and because there are no units for it, you cannot get financial aid for it. And so you can't count this as a part of your load for financial aid. You would still need the minimum number of, financial, of units matriculating to procure financial aid. So I just want to be very clear. When you move into thesis continuation, if you need to utilize it, and remember, I'm not vilifying thesis continuation. It's created for a purpose, for people who may not finish their thesis by the end of 688C. And that's OK if that doesn't happen. But what we don't want to do is make it such that that happened as a result of poor planning, 
poor engagement or poor time management.